Hi and thank you for tuning into this Red Squirrels United video tutorial. Before entering into a forest it is important that you have read and fully understood the health and safety and risk assessment documentation that should have been supplied to you by your wildlife trust or conservation organisation. Forestries can be dangerous especially during felling operations and your safety is of the utmost importance. Biosecurity is also an important factor determining our work in forestries so before we head on up into the forestry today I'm going to disinfect my tyres and once I've done that we'll crack on up and continue. Hello and welcome to this episode in the Red Squirrels United Best Practices video series. In this video we are going to discuss the methods that we use in Mid Wales for detecting the presence of red squirrels in remote forestry plantations. My name is Paul Harry and I'm joined today by Rian Mai. We are both volunteers for the Mid Wales Red Squirrel Partnership. This video will cover basic techniques in tracking and recognising for signs of red squirrel presence, followed by ground camera placement. We won't go into searching for signs of red squirrels too deeply, as this was well covered in the Ulster Wildlife Camera Trap Monitoring Tutorial, which is available at redsquirrelsunited.org.uk. We'll also cover some different methods of camera mounting and some do's and don'ts. Before we continue, I think it's important to say that we use the following method because it works for us. It's not meant to be a replacement for those groups who successfully use feeders in both red squirrel conservation and grey squirrel control but could be something you keep in mind should you have problems finding red squirrels in more remote forestry plantations. Most of you will be surveying using the standard technique and using a feeder and camera combination. And in fact, this was our original method, but we found that all we were successfully achieving was to encourage gray squirrels into the monitoring area and for them to dominate the feeders. On one survey, it was pine martins that stole the show. After months of surveying by volunteers, and in one case a whole two years with no results, we stumbled on an alternative method that seemed to work for us. By removing the food source and allowing the woodland areas to go back to normal, we suddenly found red squirrels, and the numbers of grey squirrels encroaching into the red squirrel areas decreased significantly. I know that some would say that we need to keep putting out food for the red squirrels to help their numbers grow, but we have found that the only mammal species that were benefiting from our food were mice, grey squirrels and pine martins. If we hadn't stumbled upon this idea, then it might be that we would have declared this area of forestry red squirrel free. So we removed the feeders and went back to basics. We started looking for nibble pine cones and when found, cameras were installed on nearby trees and were pointed towards the evidence, i.e. pointed at the ground. As we walk slowly through the wooded area, it's important to keep an eye out for squirrely activity. Here we can see nibbled Sitka spruce cones and seed scales, but at this stage we cannot tell if red or grey squirrels have left the eaten remains behind. So now that we have found the evidence, all we have to do is to install a camera in a suitable position and leave it for a while to see what species we have found. When installing camera traps, it's a good idea to bear a few things in mind. Make sure the camera lens and sensors are clean. Make sure you have a full set of batteries, especially if the camera is to be left out for an extended amount of time. Do install the camera at about a height of one to two meters in height. This is for ease of access, but also to reduce the amount of dew that can build up on the lens. Before installing the camera on the tree, the first thing we need to do is to get rid of some of the unwanted branches coming off so you can either use a, a saw or in my case an axe to clear away unwanted wood from the tree in the area in which you're going to put your camera. Here we can see Rian attaching a trail camera to a tree using the traditional method of a strap. Once she's uh, secured this to the tree she'll then um, put some sticks behind it to point the camera downwards, pointing towards the, uh, the red squirrel 
or hopefully red squirrel evidence on the ground. Another method of mounting uh, a trail camera is by using an ultrapod. This is one of my preferred ways because it allows you to position the camera a little bit more accurately. The ultrapod is a small plastic tripod that can be used um, if you strap the tripod to the tree like such and install your camera you have more flexibility as to the way you position the camera. I'll now go ahead and quickly install the the ultrapod so you can see how easy it is to install. First things first, install the strap around the tree. And nearly tighten it all the way up. You then get your ultrapod, slide it in through the, the strap and tighten the strap up. Then tidy, tidy the strap away. And that's now ready to install the camera. Installing the camera is really easy. Most uh, trail cameras have got a, a tripod mount attachment at the bottom. This simply screws on to the top of the ball head like such. You can then loosen off the nut on the side, point it down towards the evidence on the ground, check to see it's pointed in the right direction, tighten it up and the trail camera is installed. So another way of using a, an ultrapod is on a horizontal piece of wood or tree trunk or whatever. Um, same method applies Put your strap around the tree. Of course, this is an extra long bit. Tighten it up. And once again, nearly tighten it up, just so there's enough gap between there and the tree to get the ultrapod in. Slide the ultrapod in, tighten it as hard, tight as you can. So once we've got the, uh, the loose ends all squared away, we can attach the, the trail camera to the ball head. Point it in the angle you want now. We could point it all the way down the tree just to see what um, if the squirrel comes along, uses the tree as a, a as a route. Alternatively, you could use this to point your camera up. You might, for example, have a nest box in a tree, and this is an ideal way of getting your the angles to point up correctly. Okay, another method I use is I use um, a metal plate with a ball head. This is as easy to install as the. Um, the ultrapod again just put your strap around the tree don't tighten up quite as tight on this one the camera plate can then be slotted in and everything tightened up again tidy the the excess strap and you can see it's got a nice ball head on the front here and then you can again once you put your camera on there you can angle that in any direction you want as with the ultrapod screw the camera onto the the ball head and then position your camera. If you install your camera in relatively public areas, you may wish to secure your camera to the tree using something like a Python lock, but this can be just an expensive deterrent.
you can also padlock the SD card uh, slot as well for extra protection. Before leaving the camera, be sure to log its location, either by using a GPS or any other method that you have at your disposal. As we all use different cameras, there is little point in discussing setups, etc. So for now, we shall just turn on the camera, check the time and date, select our preferred capture method and format the SD card. When we've done that, we'll close the camera up. So now that we're finished, it's time to leave the forest and wait for the magic to occur. Sitka spruce forests in this area don't have too much wildlife wandering around, so we won't expect many clips on our return in a few days. So we've just come back to check the camera. Uh, we only left it here for a few days just for filming purposes, but we've had a quick look and there are four files on there, um, one of which we hope is a red squirrel. Right, thank you very much for joining us on this Red Squirrels United video tutorial. Um, I'd like to say a big thank you to uh, Rianne and Finn. Uh, we hope um, that by watching this video you've picked up a couple of tips or some ideas um, and we wish you all the very best of luck in your Red Squirrel conservation efforts. Thank you very much for joining us.